Hi everyone, my name is Neil Bolger and welcome back to Mastering the Basics of eQuest Energy Modeling. We're going to look at the Design Development Wizard in eQuest, which is the second tier in building an energy model using their wizard mode. So I've tabbed over to eQuest and this is eQuest 365 and what we're going to look at today applies to 364 or 363 as well. So I have my building and it's already in the design development wizard mode. And I'm actually just going to go back into the design development wizard mode. Imagine you just open your file and hit, I would like to edit this. So if I go into this mode and you can get here from making a brand new building as well, if you hit design development wizard mode, uh, it's very similar to the schematic design wizard in that you're given fewer inputs than the full eQuest to define your building. However, you're given much more inputs um, than the schematic mode. And, and the biggest difference here is they've created all these little mini tabs and buttons for us to define the site and location, the shell of the building, how many shells, as well as the different air conditioning components, both in terms of the air side systems and the central plant type systems. So if we get started here, and as we can just look at the project site, You'll notice there's only three tabs now. This is just defining the building's location, the utility rates defined, uh, the year of our analyses. If we're using any different seasons, if we want to do two seasons, what are those? We're just going to stick with one. And then the address. So very simple things. The building shell, I can edit the current shell I have. And here we can see it's set to a rectangle. I'm actually going to go all the way back and call this base floors just for purposes so this is two floors there's no daylighting controls and again now there's less inputs because this is just to define both the size of the building um, the orientation if it's oriented a certain way actually let's make it a little more interesting the rectangle let's do like a T and we'll say that this faces west which is not great but that's how it goes um, and we can start to put in constructions for just this two sets of floors. We can put in the programmatic use. This is glass types. So here we can see these two glass types. The first glass is applied only to the north. The second glass is applied to the west, east, and south. So we could have changed the properties of these if we wanted to, you know, made them. Uh, the point of today is not to pick properties, but it's really to show the function of these wizards. So I'm going to go pretty quickly through these. We could add overhangs, fins, you know, you name it. And then eventually we get to the programmatic use. So we had selected an office type, so it's already picked these seven space types and said this is how much of each we assume will be in our building, 70% of office, 10% corridors. And they even go so far as to say, well, how much of that program is likely on the first floor compared with the top? And are they in the middle of the building in the core or on the edge in the perimeter? And this is, you know, a lot of simple math is going on in the background to determine how much of the heat from people or from the computers and the lighting that they bring with them goes in different parts of our building. So it is you know, rather sophisticated. You can even see here, they even have a more detailed map where we could even dive in and say, well, in this zone, they get even more, uh, there's selected groups. So you get a lot more control. And again, the point is to just sort of express how much control do you get? And you could dive into more of these buttons if you wanted. So that's generally this sort of building shell navigation. I'm going to go ahead and create another floor just for demonstration, top floor. We're not going to copy it. It'll still be an office building. It'll be one floor. I think we'll say position from shell immediately above reference to base floors. So that's the name of our other building. So it's above that. And it's a rectangle. Let's say it's a deeper floor plate. There we go. Actually, let's make it smaller. Let's make it like 5,000 square feet because I don't want it to dwarf the top building or the bottom building. Anyways, all just for demonstrations because now the major thing here, you know, we might have a different amount of glass in this building. Maybe the south has more glass or the west has more glass. Here, 60. I think this might have to be 0.6. I don't know why it's upset. 
well, let's stick with the default for now. We can come back to this. So anyways, we already have a different building. Um, and the same way related to the building shell, you can make multiple air conditioning systems. So we already have a base air conditioning system. We can see what that is. If we go over to HVAC. Right now it's set up to hot water. If I wanted to say this building had a centralized chilled water plant, picking chilled water coils will actually change the amount of options I'm able to select later. So this whole wizard is somewhat smart where it tries to inform your options down the road based on the initial options selected in the screens. And sometimes selecting different features here will create more screens or less for us to choose from later on. Right now we can kind of see we do not have a screen three because it's already determined that from the selections I've made, I don't need whatever inputs were defined on screen three. And that might be because of the air, all based on the air conditioning system. But again, fairly high level. Let's say we have chilled water, hot water. We have a standard VAV system. We can keep going. Maybe we have different control resets. We have a supply fan, return fan. It runs all the time. So very high level inputs for air conditioning, which there'll be other tutorials about the details of what should those inputs be. And so today, let's say I want to also create a top air conditioning system just for the other room. This will be top HVAC. We'll keep it as none. And this one, let's make a package single zone. It's already defaulted to that. I'm just going to say, great, whatever you think it assigns is what I'll use. I forgot to check that it was assigned to the top floor. Going back in, I see it is top floor, all zones. If I go back to the base one, we'll check. What is this one assigned to? Base floor, all zones. So now I have it, I have two air conditioning systems, I have two shells, different properties in each. And if I felt like it, I could now even go into the shared chilled water plant that they share. Here I can actually see the flow of water can be variable speed, the pump itself can be variable speed control. I can put in, but I don't have to put in, head pressure design or flow. So if an input is not specified already, if it will actually run anyways, filling in all the blanks as needed. That's the whole point of the wizard mode. But let's say I did know 80 feet, and I don't know the flow. I'm gonna keep everything else as default. I'm gonna change this package unit to be water cooled, 0.5 kW a ton. Some basic things. This will give us cooling tower, can make it variable speed, it's an open tower. So again, I'm just sort of picking known inputs, I would assume from a chilled water condenser water plant. You can see the same on hot water and then domestic hot water. So if we want to put in how efficient is our domestic hot water plant, this is 80% right now. So those are the design development wizard inputs. And there's a lot more as you saw, but the nice thing is I can hit finish. And what it's doing is it's creating an entirely new eQuest file. So it just went from zero to a hundred and created all of these inputs. If I go to the building shell and the 3D geometry, you can actually see the building we just created. Here it is, we have the two shells stacked awkwardly on top of each other. A little bit of overlap here, right there. But it'll still work, it actually, I think, made that little piece of the wall probably exposed to the outside. Kind of doing what I need. If we go to the air conditioning system, we can see it made two systems. It made, this one is the base building, because it has a chilled water coil. Here we have another chilled water coil for the second floor of the base building. And then every single top zone has its own package unit. So as I'm going down this list, we can see it's highlighting the zone it serves. And so with all that said, you know, I can now run my building, hit OK. And so I've run the building, I hit pause there for a second, but it took only seconds. And now I can see the summary of the energy use. So with very little time, I was able to create an entire model that I can now manipulate and edit. And to change those inputs, I can either go back to Tools, Design Development Wizard. I can click this button in the middle, Design Development Wizard. At the bottom, I can go to Actions, <laughs> Building Creation Wizard. There's sort of multiple ways in eQuest to always get to the same spot. So it's gonna ask me to save, and then here I am. And so a 
key thing to note is all your inputs have to be specified in here in some form or another. And there are lots of subscreens to do that. As you've seen here, you can add glass, you can add a glass type, you can change lots of properties. But at the end of the day, you can even place them in certain spots instead of using ratios of glass. But at the end of the day, when you hit finish, it is recreating the entire model. And this is going to become really important as you start to transition from a wizard editing mode into what I call the detailed common eQuest editing mode, where you would actually go into each individual piece of equipment or the shell and make changes. Because now if I was to go into this chiller and change any of these inputs, they would actually all be erased. Any change I made in this mode would go away if I ever went back to the wizard mode. And we'll get into the next mode, the detailed edit mode after this, but you can actually see I'm not able to change anything. It's all grayed out. And that's because right now, eQuest is in wizard data edit. So with that, that is the second wizard mode, and let's move on to the detailed data edit mode.